Greetings and salutations. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Welcome to the adventure. Today's a doozy. In case this is your first time making my acquaintance, hi. My name is Zachary Peeper. I run this YouTube channel. I'm the president of my congregation at a Lutheran church. I do books. I'm the CEO of a new publishing company. You'll be able to find out more about that in the near future. And I spend my time picking fights with the forces of darkness. Now, as you might be able to tell by the title of this video, I have beef with the ELCA. Namely, I'm a Christian, I serve God, and I don't like it when people break most of his commandments and then still purport to be Christians. I don't like it when people take his name in vain. I don't like it when people engage in idol worship. And I especially don't like the endorsing of butchery of children in God's name. Now, I want you to know that I am very much invested in this. And I have been invested in this to some extent my whole life. This is the grand logbook of my church. Beefy, isn't it? When you look at the baptism records of our church, we have roots that go way back. And I do mean way back. We have members who were born in the 30s. Well, <laughs> had. And our very first baptism took place January 20th, 1942. My own baptism took place 4 11 99, just a few short years after I was born. I was confirmed not long after that. So the point I'm making with all of this is, I've been part of God's church to some extent my entire life. And I've been part of this church specifically my entire life. And this church actually predates the organization currently governing it. The reason this is relevant and why I think it's important to bring it up is to highlight the frailty of human institutions, to highlight the fact that some things that are human and of the world come before and after each other, but God is eternal. So, we must, as Christians, weigh everything against the word of God, for only he is good. So, I want to read you some passages that are relevant to our topic of discussion today. That topic being, why you cannot support the ELCA and still say you're a Christian. Why, you might ask? Because the ELCA supports the LGBTQ. In particular, they support the trans agenda, which is going after and butchering kids. And I can prove all of that. I want to read you some scripture. James 4.4 4. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit he has caused to dwell in us? But he gives us more grace. That is why scripture said, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. What month is June again? Also highly relevant to the discussion today. Deuteronomy 22.5 A woman must not wear men's clothing, nor a man wear woman's clothing. For the Lord your God detests anyone who does this. Romans 1.32 Although they knew God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these things, but also approve of those who practice them. 
And then one of my absolute favorite biblical passages, Matthew 18, 6. If anyone cause one of these little ones to stumble, those who believe in me, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. This is a letter that is publicly available on the ELCA website, penned by someone pretending to be a bishop in the Lutheran Church by the name of Elizabeth A. Eaton. In it, she loudly and proudly proclaims her support for the LGBTQ movement, specifically the trans movement and legislation that allows them to do these things to kids. This is a blog post. As of June 26th, 2023, it is live on the ELCA website, which you can see up in my browser bar. Speak and Act for Trans Lives is the title. It's from April 3rd of this year. They reference the statement from Bishop Elizabeth Eaton right there. They claim there is a genocide happening against trans people. They're right, but not in the way they think. And they reference the ELCA statement on faith, sexism, justice, and right here it says, advocate for and support laws, policies, and practices that respect diverse bodies rather than discriminating against objectifying or devaluing them. More on that later. But the point I'm making here is, the ELCA overtly and proudly supports this, not only vocally, but financially. Check this out. If you tithe to the ELCA, your dollars are being spent on mutilating adults and children. Portico, the benefit administrator for the ELCA's entire employee base, is a ministry of the ELCA and they pay for these drugs and procedures. Whistleblower Dan Scogan was uh, righteous enough to put his neck on the line and expose that this was going on. And despite what the left likes to say, or at least what they were saying for a very long time, children have been getting subjected to these procedures for years now. Jazz Jennings is one of the most famous examples, but there are many, many more every single day. Children are being surgically and chemically castrated and permanently disfigured by this movement. Dr. Anastasia is referencing a picture of the results of phalloplasty. What that means is that Doctors cut a large chunk of skin off of a girl's arm or leg and create a Frankensteinian nightmare assimilation of male genitalia and graft it onto their crotch. This nightmare Frankensteinian mockery of male reproductive anatomy has zero function. The left insists that these procedures are life-saving, that if you do not have these procedures and chemicals administered to your child who is gender dysphoric, that you will have a dead child. That is simply not true. Overwhelmingly, the emerging science is proving that social and especially medical transition makes children a whole hell of a lot worse. I would like to read you some more scripture on protecting children. Do not give any of your children to be sacrificed to Molech, for you must not profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Leviticus 18.21 Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughters in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft. Deuteronomy 18.10 2 Kings 3.27 Then he took his firstborn son, who was to succeed him as king, and offered him as a sacrifice on the city wall. 
the fury against Israel was great. They withdrew and returned to their own land. 2 Kings 16.3 He followed the ways of the kings of Israel and even sacrificed his son in the fire, engaging in the detestable practice of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. 2 Kings 23.10 he desecrated Topeth, which was in the valley of Ben Hinnom, so he could use it to sacrifice their son or daughter in the fire to Molech. Isaiah 57 2. You burn with lust among the oaks and under every spreading tree. You sacrifice your children in the ravines and under the overhanging crags. Deuteronomy 12:31. You must not worship the Lord your God in their way, because in worshiping their gods they do all kinds of detestable things the Lord hates. They even burn their sons and daughters in the fire as sacrifice to their gods. Leviticus 22-5 Say to the Israelites, Any Israelite or foreigner residing in Israel who sacrifices any of his children to Moloch, is to be put to death. The member of the communities are to stone him. I myself will set my face against him and cut him off from his people. For by sacrificing his children to Molech, he has defiled my sanctuary and profaned my holy name. If the members of the community close their eyes when that man sacrifices one of his children to Molech, and if they fail to put him to death, I myself will set my face against him and his family, and will cut them off from their people, together with all who follow him in prostituting themselves to Molech. Psalm 106, 35-38 but they mingled with the nations and adopted their customs. They worshipped their idols, which became a snare to them. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to false gods. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan, and the land was desecrated by their blood. Jeremiah 32:35. They built high places for Baal in the valley of Ben-Hinnom to sacrifice their sons and daughters to Molech. Though I never commanded, nor did it enter my mind, that they should do such a detestable thing, and so make Judah sin. Matthew 18.6 If anyone would cause these little ones to stumble, those who believe in me, it would be better that they had a large millstone hung around their neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. In 1 Thessalonians 5.21, we are told to test all things, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. A reminder that evil hides inside good. Ephesians 5.11 Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. 1 John 1.6 If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. Galatians 5.20-21 Idolatry and witchcraft Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. And a reminder that false teachers exist. 2 Corinthians 11 12 through 15. And I will keep on doing what I am doing in order to cut the ground from under those who want an opportunity to be considered equal with us in the things they boast about. 
For such people are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising, then, if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve. And then, a word on being separate from evil. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Come back to your senses as you ought, and stop sinning. For there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to your shame. To give you a quick recap, in the past 15 minutes, I made an accusation against the ELCA of grave nature. I provided more than ample evidence to indicate to you that the accusation is founded in truth. I presented to you proof that there is no justification for what they are advocating for. And I gave you the word of God, most important of all, that firmly tells you that if you align yourself with the ELCA, you will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. If you align yourself with the ELCA, if you hold them in a position of higher respect and authority, then you hold the word of God, then you will not make it through the gates. I say this to you not because I hate you and not because I hate anyone. I am afraid of God. I have a healthy fear of my Savior. And I love humans, despite the fact that I am rough around the edges. I truly do care about people. And there is no greater act of love than to try to save someone's immortal soul. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, that's the end. The enemy is firmly in place in the hearts of big tech. And he censors the truth and anyone working against him. So, if I put any more content in this video about this subject and about my argument, then guess what? It'll get taken down and I'll get a strike. If you want to see the rest of the data and evidence that I have to present to you, then join me over on Rumble and you can see the full breadth of the situation and just how dire it is. But I want to remind you that if this 20 minute video is not sufficient to convince you that you should disaffiliate with the ELCA, then you are not serving God. Do not call yourself a Christian. Do not claim to be of the flock. Everyone who is truly of the flock knows you are lying. And the only thing you're doing is hurting the image of the disciples of Christ to the rest of humanity. Glory be to God on high and his Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior.